Welcome back, YouTube, to the Courageous Sages' favorite uh, series book reviews. Today, I'm going to do you the great honor of reviewing The Mastery of Love, a practical guide to the art of relationship wisdom book by Don Miguel Ruiz, which he says he refers to ancient cultic wisdom. Now, do I really know anything about Toltec wisdom or could give you any insight? Not really. But, you know, if you go to the back of the book, you'll learn a little bit about Don Miguel Ruiz, who was born in a family of healers, raised in rural Mexico by a curandera, which is a healer. Pardon me for butchering that. Uh, his mother, and at Nagal, a shaman, his grandfather. Pardon me for butchering that. The family anticipated that Miguel, who embraced their centuries-old legacy of healings and teachings and carry forward the historic Toltec knowledge, instead distracted by modern life, Miguel chose to attend medical school and became a surgeon. A near-death experience changed his life. Late one night in the early 1970s, he awoke suddenly, having fallen asleep at the wheel of his car. At this instant, the car careened into a wall of concrete. Don Miguel remembers that he was not in the physical body as he watched himself pull his two friends to safety. Stunned by his experience, he began an intensive practice of self-inquiry. He devoted himself to the mastery of ancient ancestral wisdom, studying earnestly with his mother and completely a, completing an apprenticeship with a powerful shaman in the Mexican desert. His grandfather, who has since passed on, continued to teach him in his dreams. Uh, so he's a Nagal from the Eagle Knight lineage, dedicated to sharing his knowledge of teaching of the ancient Toltec. He lives in San Diego, California. So first off, you know, the person himself, you know, went out of his way to express that he had a near-death experience from falling asleep at the wheel, uh, which is a terrible, you know, form of driving, you know, never fall asleep at the wheel. Uh, you know, that is the where you need to be at your pinnacle of attention, which is kind of like how we drive our lives. We fall asleep at the wheels often when it comes to how we react to relationships how we react to the reality we're in. We're on autopilot most of the time, or at least we think we're on autopilot, and we might just be falling asleep at the wheel. Now, this doesn't really get into the book too much, but just a background of what this uh, little abbreviation says about the author. Now, the author, I love his work, you know. I love The Four Agreements. This one in particular, though, it's not my favorite, you know? The reason is, is because a lot of it goes into the emotional wounding of humanity. It goes into the facts that we are all emotionally wounded, that we are starving to, to feel healed, that we all are wounded in our youth and we grow up with these wounds and we live in a society where everyone is wounded, which I don't really agree with, which, you know, it's understandable, you know, that there are places in the world where that might be more, you know, heightened. People might be on a larger level of pain, you know. But for me and my friends, you know, like who I choose to hang out with, typically stay in a nice sphere of, you know, understanding, love, connection, peace, listening. It, I just don't know, you know, like, but do we learn something from this? Yes. You know, we learn a lot from books like these, you know. It goes into many aspects of the childhood trauma, like I was saying. We are afraid to be punished, but later we are also afraid of not getting the reward, of not being a good enough for mom or dad, sibling or teacher. Um, you know, like, there's a lot of gold in this book. But for me, a lot of it got bogged down with saying how, you know, the woe is me kind of aspects of why we, we treat relationships the way we do. Uh, talks about the loss of innocence, which I personally don't agree with, you know. Do I believe that we lose our innocence throughout life? No, I believe the innocence is always within us at a core intrinsic value. We are sensitive beings and will continue to be sensitive beings throughout, you know, our life, you know. But obviously there's walls that come up and this might hint at some of the walls that you have in yourself that maybe you didn't want to, you know, fully come to terms with. When we reject ourselves and judge ourselves and find ourselves guilty and punish ourselves so much, it looks like there is no love. It looks like there is only punishment, only suffering, only judgment in this world. Hell has many different levels. So 
Some people are very deep in hell and other people are hardly in hell, but it's still they are in hell. There are very abusive relationships in hell and relationships that have hardly any abuse. You are no longer a child if you have an abusive relationship. It is because you accept abuse, because you believe you deserve it. Do I completely believe that? Not entirely. Now, is this a very well-written book? Yes, it is. I mean, is there a lot to learn from it? Absolutely. But the man who didn't believe in love. That's a, an interesting chapter, the third chapter. It goes into this man who like just went on and on about how he didn't think he was going to get any love, that there was no such thing as love. He had a partner and he broke his heart or she broke his heart and so he doesn't believe in love anymore. But one day, you know, he found a woman who also felt the same way. Oh, woe is me. Life is too hard. I've gotten broken up with too, too many times. And so one day, you know, like he and her get together. They start to love each other. They have so much joy, you know, connecting over the same ideas of how love actually comes about in life. And uh, yeah, they get together. And ultimately, he goes outside and realizes how blessed he is and how grateful he is for this life. And then all of a sudden, a miracle happens and he gets this beautiful star shining down onto his life and he receives a, a miraculous star in his hands. And the first thing he wants to do is go give it to the love of his life, this miracle. And the book says that she, on, upon receiving this immense level of love, had fear in her heart and she dropped it and that star shattered into a million pieces and they were no longer together. So he says the man is at fault for choosing to give his love to this lady who wasn't ready to accept his love because it was for him, which, you know, I agree. But, you know, I don't really like the story itself. I agree that the love that we have within ourselves is for ourselves and we shouldn't just give it completely away. I believe our love should be, in a sense, overflowing into the world. That we have so much love within ourselves that we can't help but allow it to all wash over the reality around us. I can't believe I'm already seven minutes into this video. Um, so yeah, he goes in the mistake most of us make right from the beginning. We base our happiness on our partner and it doesn't work that way. We make all these promises that we cannot keep and we set ourselves up to fail. Yeah, okay. And then he goes in to say your whole life is nothing but a dream. You live in a fantasy where everything you know about yourself is only true for you. Your truth is not truth for anyone else. It includes your own children or your own parents. Uh, if you look at your own life and try to remember what you did when you were 11 or 12, you might hardly remember more than 5%. Blah, blah, blah. We go into a thousands of relationships at the same time, but every relationship is between two persons and no more than two. I have a relationship with each of my friends and each is just between two. So it goes into the fact that, you know, we're creating a dream on two parts. There's our personal dream and the dream we have together with one or another person. And then there's their dream, you know, and how you can't control their dream in this life. Uh, it says, love is always kind, fear is always unkind. With fear, we are full of obligations, full of expectations, with no respect, avoiding responsibility, feeling sorry. How can we feel good when you're suffering so much fear? We feel victimized by everything. We feel angry or sad or jealous or betrayed. Love is unconditional. Fear is full of conditions. The track of fear, I love you if you let me control you, if you're good to me, if you if you are, if you fit the, into the image I make for you, I created an image of the way you should be. And because you are not that, you will never and never will be the image. I judge you because of that and I find you guilty. So a lot of it, you know, for me, the book is just kind of harsh, you know, it's, but then there's harsh love in life too. So that's all right. Um, then the track of love, there's justice. If you make a mistake, you pay only once for the mistake. And if you truly love yourself, you learn from that mistake. In the track of fear, there is no justice. You make yourself pay a thousand times for the same mistake. You make your partner or your parent pay a thousand times for the same mistake. This creates a sense of injustice and opens many emotional wounds. Uh, as we go forward into the book, the perfect relationship. You're always intensely happy with your partner because you live with the perfect woman or man for you. How would you describe your life with a person? Well, the way you re relate with this person will be exactly the way you relate with a dog. A dog is a dog, and it doesn't matter what you do. See, for me, I just don't like his metaphor in this one. You know, you're, he's comparing a relationship to the relationship you have with your dog. Just accepting this fact in your relationship with a other human is very important. You cannot change the other people. You love them the way you do. they are, or you don't. You accept them the way they are, or you don't. 
to try to change them to fit what you want is like trying to change a dog for a cat or a cat for a horse. There is a fact that they are the way they are and you are what you are. You dance or you don't dance, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, as I said, I don't really drive with this metaphor. Do I understand what he's saying? I certainly do. Uh, it's just saying that, you know, you can't really, if you want a relationship where you control, get a, get an animal, I guess is what he's saying. Get a pet, you know, like, but a real person's a real person. You're not going to be able ever to control them. And if you do, it's a toxic relationship, you know, and then that's not real love. That's not mastering love within you, which is the goal. You know, you're here on this, uh, you know, planet, not specifically with any goal, in particular, he says that the true primordial force of this world is love. You know, do I agree with that? I think it's further than love, in my opinion. In a way, love is, uh, you know, just one facet of the infiniteness of reality, where it cannot be accumulated to just one word of love. But if you read the Tao, maybe you'll get closer to the idea of what our true purpose is, which is to live in complete harmony. Do you consider harmony love? Then, by all means, call it love. You know, the, it goes into the magical kitchen. He calls it that you have a kitchen. You can cook anything you want. You have every food. And then someday, one guy comes, offers you a pizza if you let him control your entire life. And you say, no, I got a magical kitchen. I can have that pizza and anything better. I don't need that kind of toxicity. And then it says, well, imagine if you no longer could make anything you want and the guy came with the pizza and offered it to you but only if you let him control your life and so you accept because you're hungry you're starving and then you do it again and again and again and then sooner or later you forget about your magical kitchen i just don't like that metaphor you know like you know people need to eat you know people people do their best and they're just trying out there you know does it take away from their love to, to accept the pizza once in a time you know because you don't want to cook for yourself no, i don't know i don't know he says, every relationship in your life can be healed. Every relationship can be wonderful, but it begins with you. Totally agree. Every problem that you have is your problem. That through your projection of what it is, has to be healed within you. Do you accept the anger that you have for a problem out there in the world? The anger still stems from you and, and breeds anger. So if there's an anger for a fault that somebody has done wrong to you or to a group of people and you choose anger or violence to solve that problem, you're not helping the problem. You're just, you know, extending that problem into your own life. The way to heal it is to not, you know, pretend it's not there, but to go into a deep meditative state, practically like you're looking into the truth of reality. And you see that, you know, life isn't as easy as it seems. There's going to be struggles, there's going to be suffering, but you need to live in a life that has more mercy, forgiveness for yourself, for others. You know, like you'll find more joy. And when you're living in joy because you're able to forgive the anger and judgment, there will be a better time for everyone because you're giving off the energy of mercy and forgiveness and everybody needs that. So don't stay in the anger. Uh, you dream your own reality you know your reactions are key to having a wonderful life if you learn to control your own reactions then you can change your routines and you can change your life you're responsible for the consequences of what you do every day uh, they, this is why the Toltecs create the mastery of transformation to break free of the old dreams and to create a new dream where everything is possible including escaping from the dream in the mastery of transformation the Toltecs divide people into dreamers and stalkers the dreamers know the dream is an illusion and they play in the world of illusion knowing it's illusion the stalkers are like a tiger or jaguar stalking every action or reaction you know i'm not coming at the guy for you know his work as an artist he's a wonderful writer it still had me intrigued throughout the whole book i just you know like not a huge fan of the majority of it is coming down on the fear and anger that we have as a society i would have enjoyed more of this mastery to talk about the agopic nature you know the light that is imminent through every cell of your being and every cell of this grass around me and every cell of these trees you know 
it does go into saying that, you know, that you are the trees, you are the plants, you are this, but you know, it just goes so much into the trauma. You know, it's really instilling what the trauma is. Like for a section of this, it goes into if somebody was sexually abused, you know, that's gonna be an instant trigger for a lot of people, you know? I just, to get there, you know, I understand you should have love for everyone. You know, love for everyone doesn't mean that it has to be uh, accepting what people do, of course. Uh, it says sex is the biggest demon in hell. That was one of the whole chapters. It goes on and on about how uh, we have made sex a demon, you know, like, and how sex is the biggest sin of humans. The human body is made for sex. You are biologically a sexual being and that is just the way it is. Your body is so wise. All the intelligence and the genes and the DNA. Uh, it basically goes on. Men are always too much or too wimpy, depending on who is judging. Women are always too thin or too fat. You know, it goes on to the judgments that we play in the sexual world and how Catholics are raised. You have all these ideas about how sex should be, you know. So, you know, I get it. You know, love does have something to do with sex. But when I think of mastery of love, sex is a very small portion of what mastery of love looks like to me. Uh, you are a life passing through your body, passing through your mind, passing through your soul. Once you find that out, not with logic, but with intellect, but because you can feel life, you find out that you are the force that makes flowers open and close and make the humming bird fly from flower to flower. You find out that you're very, in every tree you are, in every animal, vegetable, and raw. You're the force that moves the wind and breathes through your body. The whole universe is living, being that is moved by the force that is the way you are. You are life. Now, the Divine Huntress, he goes into the story of Artemis. You know, this Artemis fell in love with Hercules. Hercules wasn't interested, you know, not that he wasn't interested. He just didn't know Artemis loved her. And Artemis was controlling the forest, but she wanted to hunt Hercules because she wanted Hercules to love her. So she spent all her energy on going after Hercules. Hercules was oblivious, was busy saving everybody, doing great things. And she was just letting the forest die. And then one day she got bopped on the head, basically, for awareness wise. And... She realized she was letting the forest die, and if she really wanted to ha love Hercules, then she has to love herself. Then it goes into the story of Prometheus, who had to be on the rock, uh, you know, get his, you know, stomach eaten out, you know, by uh, uh, vultures every day, and then it was regenerated his body during the nighttime, and then the next day vultures would come eat him out again for giving fire to humanity. You know, it goes into the Greeks, uh, you know, perspectives, which I don't understand how that has to do with Pultic, but, you know, I do know that there's a lot of similarities through ancient religions. You know, it just, the book kind of let me down a little bit. You know, like there should be, you know, a broader spectrum of what, going into a Gothic energy, going into the angelic Christ-like love, going into the, you know, the Buddha love, the Krishna love, just understanding that this love is, you know, a radiant facet for you if you choose to visualize it, you know? And I just think some of the visuals in this book and the metaphors in this book are distracting. You are the force that plays with your mind and use your body as a favorite toy to play and have fun with. The reason you are here to play and have fun. You are born with the right to be happy, with the right to enjoy life. You are not here to suffer. Whoever wants to suffer is welcome to suffer, but you don't have to suffer. You know, I agree. You know, like our religions tell us that we came here to suffer. The life is a valley of tears. Suffer today, have patience, and when you die, you'll have your reward. Sounds beautiful, but it isn't true. We choose to suffer because we learn to suffer. If we continue to make these same choices, we will continue to suffer. The dream of the planet carries the story of humanity, the evolution of humans, the suffering is the role of human evolution. Humans suffer because we know. We know that we believe. We know all these lies, and because we can't fulfill all these lies, we suffer. You know, it just goes on more about suffering and suffering. And miss the mystery schools around the world, this is called the awakening. It is this, if you awake one day and you no longer have the emotional wounds, when you no longer have the wounds in your emotional body and boundaries disappear and you start to see everything as it is, not according to your belief system. You open your eyes and you don't have these wounds, you become a skeptic. You know, it's just, I don't know. I've read a lot of books on spirituality. Uh, your body is a temple, a living temple where God lives. Your mind is a living temple where God lives. God is living with you as life. The proof that God lives within you is that you are life. Your life is the proof, of course, in your mind there's garbage and emotional poison, but God is also there. When your relationship is completely out of hell, you will lose yourself so much that you don't need each other at all. And the major things I took from this book 
had to be that in a relationship, you can only take your half of the relationship and do what you will with your half. You're only in control of your half. You're only in control of how you react to certain stimulus. You're only in control in the way that you choose to go about your daily life. You know, like if you get in arguments with your girlfriend or partner about who does the dishes and things like that, it's your choice to get to the point of anger. You know, even if they do something that is instilling anger, it's up to you to choose to be able to draw it back in and be like, I'm more mature than this. I'm more loving than this. So for me, the mastery of love is worth the read. It's worth the read because it's easy read. It's very basic level, you know, unconditional love kind of mindset and why we live in fear and why we suffer and all this, you know. It's nice, practical, you know, it's a nice book on the shelf. Would I read it again and feel like I'm getting that much more out of it? Probably not. Would I recommend the Tao Te Ching or the Bhagavad Gita or mm, the teachings of Buddha specifically? Or would I recommend, you know, maybe reading some Hebrew mysticism? You know, probably. You know, I actually would prefer reading Greek mythology to this, you know, like a whole book on what the different gods and stories were because you get so much more from the story. He's trying to tell a story. He has a bunch of stories throughout this book expressing ways that we are hard on ourselves. But you know, you write the story yourself and you choose to be the character you wanna be in this reality. So figure it out. Choose to love yourself so much that you just overflow into reality. Life is, is only as hard as you, you choose to make it, you know? You, you could be in prison like Gandhi. You could be in prison like uh, Nelson Mandela. And you can still come out on top, you know? It really is how you and what you do with the space that you have. You know, how you choose to spend the time with what you're given. We take it for granted often. You know, I've taken for granted the ability to reach you all for so long. I'm just here doing my thing reading books out in the middle of the ocean on this beautiful island and I'm here to share the love that I have with myself and my honest you know simple review not very uh, not very thorough you know not very you know I want to get you have your own opinion in this book so thanks for tuning in thanks for watching with me you all have a blessed rest of your day namaste